Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm your host, Lasan Fay. And so just to make something clear here, I did do some maintenance in between episodes and what I did was I made sure all of my companions were leveled up and I cleared out my inventory. So I went from being almost full to back to having a low inventory count. Um, and upgraded some weapons and armor along the way. And also dealt with some weapon modifications. Okay. Um. The mages seem happier here without temples. Indeed. Um. One thing, though, that I do want to do real quick is because Dorian is new and we haven't talked to him too much. So I take it you're Danish? Is that the correct word here? Yes. Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. Little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. I do appreciate it. And I appreciate your help, Dorian. Excellent. Mutual appreciation is a grand way to begin. It is. Tell me about yourself. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinter, you mean? Beyond that? Yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. Of course it is. I'm well aware of your finer qualities. Believe me. Of course you are. You're a discerning and intelligent woman, after all. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I yep. am the scion of House Parvus, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinta in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. Yep. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary, I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. So why do you care? It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Devinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war, and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. So... Then... Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinta? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. <laughs> I can do more for Tevinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. 
<laughs> yeah, thousand years. That would predate all of the known ages and send you back to the ancient. So. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Devinta don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Interesting. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. So, yes, I am aware that, um, well, Dorian is not interested in the Inquisitor, but I love the fact that, um, in this game, you can still flirt with characters even though they're not an open romance option for a particular character you're playing. I I think it's cool that they still decided to throw that in because it's like, oh, hey, uh, I, I can try, right? Um, also, the way I see it, um, and this is something I'm familiar with if, with my own background, is like people who you have friendships with, sometimes you practice your lines on them, so that way you could be like, hey, this works, right, 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 yes, good, um, without having any sort of attachment. So uh, it's why I'm just fine flirting with Dorian, because it's all kind of, it is kind of all a game, and inherently that's, that's kind of the fun of it. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Indeed. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. <laughs> Madness. It was flying pigs, right, right? That one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. <laughs> I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? Um... It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy craft? <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. Interesting. What is the magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title. I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. Yeah, explain. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. Indeed. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new Magisters, which means all the families buy madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter inference, let me tell you. <laughs> if it's a fiction, that means mages do rule then. Yes, and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinta legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. 
someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. What about daughters? Poor swords don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the hundred pillars, at best. Being a quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Okay. Let me ask you something else. Of course. Like, I do actually find this stuff interesting, so... There's an Imperial charm tree, isn't there? With its own divine. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. <laughs> but yes, we do have the charm tree, or a version of it. Night and day, comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over in business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them. For the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The circles are in command. You even have there circles. Are circles of magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyrium. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce their Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Uh huh. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. <laughs> Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise. But the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal wolf, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damaged. So we elected a man as divine, the south declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. Eh? So... The Imperial Divine is always a man. All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female Magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. All right. Do you consider yourself Andrastine? The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the south. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I'm not surprised. It's not an opinion you should share. You did ask, if you recall. I'll That's say this. not what I was trying to I say. I believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or Fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't, like, the response I thought that was going to be, given that my character is Dalish and isn't Andrastan. It's like, yeah, it's unconventional, but we have several people who think like you, but you may not want to go shouting it from the rooftops. You don't seem like the religious soul, to be honest. If you could find religious sitting in a chantry and listening to a blithering hen tell you how to live, then no. If you define it as believing in the possibility that something larger than yourself exists, then yes, by all means. The world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. 
It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe. But I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. All right. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. Indeed. Um. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't. At least, not efficient. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. Yes, that's right. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Kunari for what? 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, You've had it easy for far too long. Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Orlesian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. Technically, we're not. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. Okay. Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. That's what any Magister would tell you. They'd be convincingly offended by the notion too. Of course, what people call blood magic here and what we consider blood magic are two different things. Uh, what's considered actual blood magic in Tavinta? Good question. Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant, what's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summons. None of that is done. Not efficient. Behind closed doors, that's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge, a leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out of power to put it up. Well, we already know that there really isn't. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off. Too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. And most of them are probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. Of course. I do. I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. You're very patriotic. Meanwhile, that magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learn to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariah. Okay, and the last question. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah, that is true. And did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. Not even certain many slaves do. So this is obviously a line that several people say gets Dorian in trouble. And the truth of the matter is, is that if you go and look at Dragon Age 2 and talk to Fenris about his time as a slave um, he talks about the fact that no, he didn't question it it was what he was supposed to do um, and what was expected of him um, and when you do have those expectations lined up for you and it's all you see and all you know that's that's the habit um, at least the mental habit so um, yeah. Uh. Hmm. 
That's it. You don't question it. In the South, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? At least they're free. They don't have slavery forced on them. You think people choose to be poor and oppressed? I doubt it. I sure. don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the law. All right. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I should go. Here I thought we were just getting to the good part. Oh, oh dear. I should have done that one earlier. Oh. Okay. Can I have a positive conversation with someone, Solas? Hello. I'd like to know more about you, Solas. Why? Uh... You're an apostate, yet you risked your freedom to help the Inquisition. Not the wisest course of action when framed that way. I appreciate the work you're doing, Solas. I just wanted to know more about you. I'm sorry. There's so much fear in here. What would you know of me? Um, hmm. What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest the young man. Especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, the spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. They treasured my dreams. Being awake, out of the Fade, became troublesome. Did spirits try to tempt you? No more than a brightly colored fruit is deliberately tempting you to eat it. I learned how to defend myself from more aggressive spirits, and how to interact safely with the rest. I learned how to control my dreams with full consciousness. So much I wanted to explore. Well, I gather you didn't spend your entire life dreaming. No. Eventually, I was unable to find new areas in the Fade. Why? Two reasons. First, the Fade reflects the world around me. Unless I traveled, I would never find anything new. Second, the Fade reflects and is limited by our imagination. To find interesting areas, one must be interested. Better angle. Is this why you joined the Inquisition? I joined the Inquisition because we were all in terrible danger. If our enemies destroyed the world, I would have nowhere to lay my head while dreaming of the fate. Ah. Inquisitor, that is why I joined, not why I stayed. Well. I wish you luck. Thank you. In truth, I've enjoyed experiencing more of life to find more of the fate. How so? You train your will to control magic and withstand possession. Your indomitable focus is an enjoyable sight, then. You have chosen a path whose steps you do not dislike because it leads to a destination you enjoy. As have I. Indomitable focus? Presumably. I have yet to see it dominate. I imagine that the sight would be... fascinating. <laughs> I love the tonal change there. By the way, in the voice acting. So... Where have you studied? You said you've traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the faith. Dream in ancient ruins, you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers, the best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt Dostaga. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. So... I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, 
I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Kaelin fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. And you can't tell which is real? It is the fate. They are all real. Which... Ooh, I also love that perspective. Like, so, so much. Because, obviously, we know that Loghain um, may not have always had the best intentions, but um, like how he was perceived by himself, by other soldiers um, that were in both his army and in the army that was lost. It's just, it's so cool. So cool. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. You're saying that you became friends with pride and desire demons? They were not demons for me. Meaning? The fate reflects the mind of the living. If you expect a spirit of wisdom to be a pride demon, it will adapt. And if your mind is free of corrupting influences, if you understand the nature of the spirit, they can be fast friends. See, that is amazing. I'm impressed like, that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, a chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her fate? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? No, and that's, like, perfectly, perfectly valid. So. You have an interesting way of looking at the world, Solus. I try. And that isn't quite an answer. I look forward to helping you make new friends. That should be... Well... That isn't quite an answer, either. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, no, I, I love that. I hear the refugees are doing much better now. The Inquisition is saying that I understand. And essentially she's saying that Solas is defined by his curiosity in the Fade and not his baldness. Her gracious lady bit. Oh! Um... What do you think about the people who have gathered? Which? The ones who do things? The ones who give orders? What do you think about our spymaster, ambassador, and commander? Liliana is pretty in places. Swear I've seen her too. Or her she used to play. But that'd be mad. Now Josephine, she's as good at humbling her kind as I am. Just with less mess. She knows her business, if you have to have it. And colour. If you want a jackboot, you get a big one so you can grow into it. Nice pair. <laughs> Thoughts about Cassandra? Not as fucking duff as she plays, right? Tough, though. I'd stand behind her in front of anything. What about Solus? Solus? <laughs> His head's crammed up a thousand years ago. Varric? Anything to say about Varric? Varric? Too clever. Always saying something, but never saying it straight. Any thoughts about Warden Blackborn? He's too good, right? I'd like to see him out of that uniform. Not like that. <laughs> what about Dorian? <laughs> He's fun. Could lose a bit more to Vinter. What's your opinion of Vivienne? She's a bitch, but she knows. 
better. Thoughts on iron balls? Huh. You make me wonder about things. Well, what's that women look like? Uh huh. We'll talk later. Have fun. Good, right? I'll be here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I've had the fun conversations at least. Nope. Still haven't adjusted to my jump being in a different place from my other games. Yet. So. The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the week. I was going to end the I episode. I should tell you, Ambassador. The Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I was going to end the, the episode here, but real quick. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corbin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. Oh, joy. How? Oh. Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. They're becoming a challenge. Oh, joy. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power instead of combating the masses. The Chantry couldn't solve its own problems when it had a divine. Yet many people continue to bear its great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rasti's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. So if everyone listens to the chant, things will be smooth as silk. I did say commonality is merely a beginning, but it's an important one. We must learn to think beyond our own wants to secure peace in Thedas. Planning to steer the history of the world, Ambassador Montelier. I believe the Inquisition is already charting that course. Which brings me to a question, if you have a moment. Okay. The remaining Grand Cleric sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of them. They don't claim to be holy or I don't know. I don't know if a miracle from Andraste saved me any more than they do. Yet, as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Woo! Alright, well. I guess this is where I'm that. going to uh, end this episode. Anyways, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in, and in the meantime, in between time, take care, have fun, happy trails.